Hello friends, welcome back. In this tutorial, we are going to study about Aloha protocol. Now what happens, uh, the data link layer in the IEEE standard is divided into two sublayers, LLC and MAC, right? This uh, MAC is pronounced as MAC. So what happens, uh, the data link layer in the IEEE standard is divided into two sublayers, LLC and MAC. Now, uh, what happens in LLC layer, right? The LLC layer, uh, uh, the full form of LLC is logical link control, right? The full form of LLC is logical link control. So what happens in this LLC layer? The LLC layer is the upper sub layer that is responsible for flow and error control. Now, next is MAC layer, right? Full form of MAC that is MAC is media access control, right? So what happens uh, the MAC layer? is the lower sub layer which is mostly responsible for multiple access resolution. Uh, we will study about this uh, LLC and uh, MAC layer in uh, another tutorials. We will study about them later, right? In this tutorial, we will study only about Aloha protocol, right? Now what happens uh, when nodes are connected to use a common link called multipoint or broadcast link, then a multiple access protocol is needed to coordinate access to the link. So many protocols have been devised to handle access to the shared link and uh, they are categorized into three categories. Random access protocols, controlled access protocols and channelization protocols. Right. Now what happens? Aloha is a random access protocol. Right. Now, what happens in uh, random access protocols? What are the features of random access protocols? Now, what happens in uh, random access protocols? In random access protocols, no station is superior to another, right? And uh, none of the station is assigned the control over another, right? And no station permits or does not permit another station to send, right? Now, what happens in random access protocol? In random access protocols, a station that has uh, data to send uses a procedure defined by the protocol to make a decision on uh, whether or not to send. And uh, this decision depends uh, on the state of the medium, whether it is idle or busy, right? So in uh, random access methods, stations compete with one another to access the medium, right? So what happens with this uh, Aloha? Aloha is a random access method, right? Aloha was uh, designed for uh, radio LAN, but it can be used for any shared medium, right? Now, what happens? There are two versions of Aloha, pure Aloha and slotted Aloha. So first we will study about pure Aloha. Now what happens in uh, pure Aloha? Pure Aloha, it is a simple protocol and uh, in this protocol, whenever a station has a frame to send, it sends the frame. In this method, when more than one station send frames simultaneously, then there is a collision and the frames are destroyed, right? Because here there is only one channel to share. Now what happens, uh, the frames which are destroyed during transmission, they need to be reset, right? Now what happens, when a station sends a frame, it expects the receiver to send an acknowledgement, right? Now if the acknowledgement does not arrive within a specific time, then the station resends the frame, right? Now what happens whenever there is a collision, a collision involves two or more stations, right? So what happens, therefore, all these stations have to resend the frames, right? And if all these stations try to resend their frames at the same time, then the frames will collide again, right? So what happens? Uh, therefore, pure Aloha dictates that uh, when timeout period passes, each station waits a random amount of time, right? Each station waits a random amount of time before resending the frame. And this time is called back of time, right? And the randomness will help avoid more collisions, right? Now, 
after a maximum number of retransmission attempts uh, which is denoted by k max right after a maximum number of retransmission attempts a station must give up and try later right now now we will study about vulnerable time so what is this uh, vulnerable time this uh, vulnerable time it is the length of time in which there is a possibility of collision right suppose a station send fixed length frames and each frame is taking tfr seconds to send right then in pure aloha the vulnerable time during which a collision may occur it is two times the frame transmission time right this tfr what is this tfr it represents the frame transmission time right it represents frame transmission time right so uh, in pure aloha the vulnerable time during which a collision may occur is two times the frame transmission time right now we will study about slotted aloha what happens the vulnerable time for slotted aloha is one half that of pure aloha right slotted aloha vulnerable time is equal to frame transmission time in slotted aloha the time is divided into slots of frame transmission time right that is tfr seconds right and the station is forced to send frames only at the beginning of the time slot right as here you can see in this figure right now in this case also in slotted aloha also there is still the possibility of collision if two stations try to send at the beginning of the same slot right as here you can see in this case in slot 2 right but to what happens in slotted aloha in slotted aloha the vulnerable time is equal to frame transmission time right so what happens in slotted aloha in slotted aloha vulnerable time is one half of uh, the vulnerable time of pure aloha 